when we should no, 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 I'm no, hitting don't record. Don't I'm away for the real. I'm away for the real one to talk. There we about, go. Okay. Man. This is the, the real best. time to talk. This is the best. I already hit record, so they got to hear that because fighting is easier outside <laughs> the cage unless you're dealing with the fighter inside the podcast Skype room. It's time for Verbal Tap, the show that proves it. I am your host, Kevin. With me, of course, Rafa Barza. We're so excited about the fights. We're bursting at the seams. We have Fernando back, but I'm going to start. Raf, how are you? My I'm main good. lady. My main gal. My the main lady. man, Pod. Yes, yes, yeah, of course. Talking smack since the beginning of the podcast. I mean, here's the thing. Kevin's just trying to allude to the fact that we've been podcast married for almost 10 years. And at Ooh. this point, none of that fucking affects me. Uh, you know what does affect me? Effects. It is. Thank you. Um, <laughs> here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm looking down at my leg, and I'm now realizing that some of the underclassmen need to fucking cut their nails. So that's a fun <laughs> discovery to make. But other than that, I'm doing good, Kevin. How about you? I am excellent. Fernando, how are you, sir? Yes. Welcome back to the podcast. Not arrested I'm after good. his last appearance. How are you? <laughs> Not arrested? You were so angry, we weren't sure. You might leave, drive in, start a fight with some people. That was funny, Kevin. (laughs) How are you? I'm really good. I'm actually really, really good. Happier every day, living in paradise. You do live in paradise. You do live in an amazing world. How's training? Training is great, too. Getting stronger every day, getting faster, getting better. Uh, my wrestling is getting better too. That's like my main thing right now. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm good. Mm. Hold on. When you say your main thing, what do you mean? Is it like a focus? You'll give it extra attention? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. I I I've been putting uh, more effort on it. I feel that it's like a gap that I got that I used to have on my game, and it's been getting better with time. I mean, you never know. <laughs> I might be the next compete. <laughs> I like that. I like you. Never. Okay, that's interesting to me to hear. I like MMA fighter strategy as on that stuff because Raf's always trying to become a wrestler, so I don't murder him because I spent that <laughs> one year in seventh grade doing it. So, but as a focus, it, it, is that brutal for you or do you enjoy it? Because for me, every time it's wrestling practice and jujitsu, it's like I my eyes roll to the back of the head. Well, I mean. If it is with your jitsu, you I think you're just being CC. You're just being a CC. But uh, I mean, <laughs> but uh, with uh, wrestling at least, like uh, I'm not gonna say that you're wrong because I think you're right. Wrestling has to be hard. It has to be dirty. It has to be physical. And uh, what I find myself doing, and and it worked the best for my wrestling is. You swallow it up, swallow it up, you know, like, fuck it. It has to be hard. Like, there's no other way to get better at that. Um, I drill a lot by myself, too. Like, uh, like, you see me regularly, and I'm always throwing punches, right? But now I'm, like, faking takedowns or stuff like that. I'm on my house working. I'm like, okay, my knee has to be here. I have to stand up like this. So, yeah, I think I'm putting a little bit more of effort on it. I... I, I like that you call that Hi. out because if you've ever watched NCAA wrestling, it's the most mm-hmm. violent thing I've ever seen on the planet. Raph, I yeah, can't believe you let me get away with talking shit on your wrestling that long distance. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's put it this way. Uh, I'm training with somebody tomorrow who I think is going to ask for some wrestling rounds. So, no, I'm in a space of, yeah, I guess that's what I have to do, too. So, yeah, I get it. And, and you know what? The thing is, I'm not a fighter. So I don't have to do anything if I don't want to. <laughs> Through if I'm being honest, when all these fighters are like, I have to do this, I'm like, me too. And they go, yeah, when do you fight? I go, oh, I don't. Oh, I can choose not to. Oh, I didn't remember that. Anyway, <laughs> Fernando, let's ask this. You came onto our show about a day before the UFC 273. So uh-huh. what did you feel like? the day of did you even remember your picks were you nervous were you yeah, excited yeah i did remember my picks okay uh okay. I, was, I mean i wasn't nervous i don't think i should be nervous uh 
Uh, well, I was talking about were you nervous watching the fights? Because one consistent note that we get is, you know, when people bet on fights, it's no big deal. But this is a public venue that we yeah, are. Yeah. So it, it's out and the record stays there. We don't delete these episodes. Uh, much uh, to much people's why charge do I in. bet? Why do I bet a shirt? You did. You did. You bet a shirt. But and I'm saying like. Buying one of you guys a shirt? Yeah, yes, and we'll get I to mean, that a little a bit later. For me, that's good. I, I was just going to give you guys like church for free, no matter what. So. Oh, damn it! <laughs> yeah, well, the jokes but, on no, us. I mean, I but was, what I'm yeah, saying is, it's, you guys. I don't play this game for shirts. <laughs> Shut up, both of you. <laughs> I play this really game for a little thing called street pride when it comes okay. to picking. Because once upon a time. This condescending grad student gave me the grief about his BS that I wasn't very good at picking. And I'm here to okay. prove I am, Fernando, to you, to everyone, to everyone, to the world. This is about my central uh, what? my central character and culture. Yeah. Yeah, but that's cool, I will next take time, that shirt. Next time, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're saying it and you're so confident about it. <laughs> You want to talk about the street things next time and next card? Let's bet slaps. I do not want to go that. I don't. I would like to draw the line. <laughs> well, <you talk laughs> just run out of time here. That'll do it for this And episode. good night. Everyone have a great thing. We've just continued verbal tap. Kevin no longer exists. Have a good day. I want to point out it's taken 502 episodes for a guest to get violent with us and to be like, you know what? Let's put some slaps on this bitch. Um, I mean, he's talking about all the street and all these things, the honor and stuff. You're talking with a martial artist, brother. No, I know, I know. Uh, and Kevin, a one-dimensional one. <laughs> God. Oh, no. Okay, Fernando, I need you to remember something. Yes, Kevin sir. is a comedian. We the know. last thing we need we is for should. someone to come and Will Smith their way onto this podcast. He's oh, just oh, telling mean, jokes. With a a... I'm not going to just go slap him. Yeah, he you're... I don't think there. Fernando's <laughs> tall enough for that, is he? <laughs> I'm not How Chris. How tall are you, Kevin? Six foot? <laughs> mm. I think you never see me in person. That's why you're saying those things. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rap, listen, you're both I thought tall. we were supposed we to be it. nice this episode. We are, I came this prepared to, to compliment his wrestling. What? The problem is we forgot to turn off the shit-talking part of him. And listen, Fernando... This is where we all gather and, and harmonize and happiness because yes, please. we're talking about the fights that happened this weekend. So the, the question I had was not, man, are you mad about the bet or anything or are you nervous on that? I was asking if you, when you were watching it, did it change the way you were watching because you knew you had at least publicly stated some of those uh, predictions? No, not at all. I think like, I'm, I mean, I'm a men of my world i don't back down on the things that i say and like i mean i mean that's mma that's why you you don't bet on it money because you never know what's going to happen who was the <laughs> robbery who was your robbery i want to hear your for me for me it was if there's there was a few robberies uh hit us a, a few fights that i felt that were like maybe kind of off or awkward for me i can say but uh you're safe, Miko. I had to do that. I'm sorry. He's like, okay. it's it's on my head. I have to do that with the, like, <laughs> uh, but uh, it was is one of the coaches here, so like, I always say bye to him like that. <laughs> He's good people. I, I know who you were yeah, saying goodbye to, so that's yeah. Perfect. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, what I was saying, uh, I think the biggest for me was the Kamsa and. Ber I, I can say that. Interesting. Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a, like a robbery, to be honest. Okay, okay. I want to hear you out, Kevin. I'm not sure if you saw the fights this weekend. Did you? You know, I saw the under. I saw some of the undercard. I, okay. I was glued well, to so the. So why lad. are you talking? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Look, I understand picking fights is hard, as you demonstrated, yeah. but. This is the different part. Now we get to analyze them. I did miss the main card because I wasn't paying for it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> curious about that one. But yeah. And frankly, I'll give my colleague here a shout out. That Pennington call you made was one. And this is I don't mean this to be back backhanded. Gee. One of your only good ones. 
but it was good. Oh, uh, I would like to point out I was more right than we'd like to give me credit for, but okay. You Let's were go back on, to this. On Pennington, actually, yeah, I forgot. I've blocked out a whole section I did about Lad. Yeah. You, thank you. Fernando. About, okay, you're saying of one of them. What about the, the Mickey Gall one? Huh? Why are we not talking about the Mickey Gall one? Huh? I was putting him over because he did something for our show. And yeah, was and it I an early he stoppage? Jinx himself. He jinxed himself. Hey, hey, hey. Was it an early stoppage? No. It was it was a uh, I, it, it was a CM Punk move. It was a CM Punk oh, move. God. God. It was okay. a CM Punk move. Listen, yes. dude, Jinx. I just Jinx. I want to point this out to you, okay? I'm yes, just sir. saying he did something for our show that somebody that else nice. on this podcast right now didn't do for our show. So it tells me that Mickey Gall was able to go the extra mile when the other person on this show was like, I don't know how to film now and do me, pro wrestling. Tell me that if I did it, I might be jinxing myself. So thank God Mickey Gall do it first and prove That's me wrong. That's not what that means. That has yeah, that no means. bearing. What kind of Chris superstition are you coming so, into so, this with? That, uh, I have to make a public statement right now. I have to say sorry to Mickey Gall for having to jinx himself with this show. <laughs> oh, my God. Fernando, oh, I like good. that you're coming in like you just got your palm read from somebody <laughs> down the street, and you're like, I have this wisdom. Get out of here. I want to tell you this. You aren't wrong in saying that it was a good fight. If anything, really paid for my $75 for that fight. Uh, the fight card. It fight? was that oh. one fight. Burns and uh, Chimev was actually very fun to watch. What do you mean, Volkanovski show? Like, oh, oh, Volkanovski put in work, but I'll yeah. get to why that didn't pay for it. Stay on task here with me, Fernando, because okay. I'm asking you, uh -huh. why do you think that fight was a robbery? Oh man, I honestly like I think Burns uh, did a little bit more. Uh, it was really close, don't get me wrong, but Burns defend good, and then a few of the times that Kamsa get him to take him down, there was not a single second of control. Uh, Burns did whatever was possible to push him away, like hammer fist, uh, knees on the chest, and then push him, and it wasn't just one time, it was repetitive times. There was obviously a few takedowns that he actually got, but I think Burns' game was just a strong, a stronger overall. I know the first round was like I can I can clearly say the first round was was for Kamsa, but I give second and third to Burns to be honest. Okay, <clears throat> here's where I have issue. Yes, that third round seems to be I don't know. There's some weirdness because I think we're all in agreement on. So, oh, like literally everyone who I talk and I feel that that's how it is. Like everything is on that last round, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're really in dispute on that third round. And I thought, to your credit, it looked like Burns had some more impactful hits, but that he didn't put as many strikes per se uh, at times when it's round by round. So to me, when I looked at those strike, uh, significant strikes, I said, man, this is very close. But I think that wrestling, it did make an impact. I think it did allow some control time. So that to me was like, damn, this is uh, this is close. But I actually had it for Kazma. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. I did. I thought I was watching it live. I did a little fight companion, and I wasn't rooting for him. I was rooting for Burns, and I just said mm -hmm. like, man, I it's think Burns like is just short on this one. Okay. That's crazy. I was actually like just rooting for a good fight and like I was just focused on like trying to see the fight, you know, not not too much to go to one side or the other. But like I saw the opposite, as you say, I think that uh, Burns put a little bit more punches in the last round, a little bit more effective punches. Um, also, there, there were those like weird drops where he was like, Swinging so hard and like Kamsa, you kind of like got got down on his knees a few times, and I feel that those things too like give him give Burns control on the ground a little bit too. Okay, okay. There was I mean, that, that part I... of the illegal knee that I was like, damn, the illegal kick that he choked. I was like, damn, we fighting, fighting. <laughs> <laughs> 
There was an illegal knee. No, like he, he throw. So there was a point where like he they were swinging and uh, Kamsa got down to his knees, right? And when he was standing up, uh, Burns throw a kick. Like he just throw a kick, but like it will land on the face if Kamsa didn't move. And <laughs> it was really, really <laughs> like damn. So can, that's what I want to stop on, right? I I understand Kazmet still won, but for me to wax poetically about this, there's a moment in the movie 300 where Gerard Butler as Leonidas is like, it's just about making him bleed. The narrative coming out of this fight is, okay, Kazmet is not invincible. That Gilbert pretty much yeah, yeah, yeah. really held his exactly. own. Yeah, Gilbert show that this guy is not invincible. I think that now a lot of people will take that fight. After this this fight with Burns, a lot of people will take that fight with Kamsa. That's the thing. So that'll be fun. That part I'm excited yeah. about, right? Like, okay, cool. So Gilbert proved there's there's an art of possibility here because this was a decision fight, which is uh-huh. not, not what you want when your narrative is, I'm the baddest person on the effing planet. I can pick anyone yeah. up. Well, not Gilbert exactly. Burns, right? And we, I mean, he even won, but it feels like a loss in a lot of ways. You know, so, the only thing the only thing that pissed me off, I mean, at the end of the day, they, uh, whatever, Kamsa won, like, he gave a good fight, too. But what pissed me off the most is that a lot of people is like, oh, respect to the Burns, respect to Burns. Bro, respect Burns from, like, 20 fights before this one. Like, why people is just looking at him now? He's been, he's been game for so long. That's, that's what pissed me off. Because we've been burned before. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Stellar pun. I'm Can I say this? Mute myself for five minutes <laughs> on mandatory. I know that you picked him, but uh-huh. that was my exact argument for him. Uh-huh. Was that I was saying on the show last week as I was like, dude, Dana's already looking past him to make that Shimev versus uh Covington fight. And I think it was weird because I go, dude. Burns has really, really been putting in solid, solid efforts in fights when we asked him to step up at Mm last-minute opportunities. And I thought to myself, this dude has a really good resume. I don't understand how we're just not giving him the respect. And I'm so happy Mm -hmm. that at the very least, even if he didn't win, even people like you who will look at him and be like, I will make the case that he won. So you have a new set of people who are going to go to the fucking mattresses for him, which yeah, great. yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. I mean, he won a lot of fucking fans that day. And the <laughs> second thing I want to bring up here is the fact that I'm like, yeah, I really appreciated this because I think he made mention that if Colby Covington didn't fight Chimev, and he alluded to a Karenism by saying like, if he calls the cops on Chimev, I'm game for a five rounder with him. And Shemev said, hey, I'll steal your soul, boy, uh, if we go five rounds. Let's do it. So they are in agreement to fight. Because I had some people, I think, who were sending me Again? messages. Yeah. I, I, he's saying if that fight does not materialize, let's make a rematch. And oh, honestly, nice. I'm nice. really into that. Because... <clears throat> I don't know what would have played out. I don't know. That's a move. That's a move. That's literally the move. That's what they have to do. That's the money No, but see, now here's the issue. Dana was saying that he wants Chimev versus Covington to headline a card on the ABC Mm -hmm. network, which means that that is big money because that means that they would headline it. So already Uh you have your main headliner that I think a lot of people are interested in, but they also have a backup should that not manifest that I think Uh is more than And it's a good main event too because they already sell the first one. So I think that's that's what I mean when I say that that's the move. It's more like that's a move like having that replacement as a fight, that's perfect. That's like, it's a nice thinking. Yeah, so I'm very excited for that. Kev, if there's any fight that you watch in the next month when it goes up, this is really the one that paid for that pay-per-view. And you were alluding to the fact that Volkanovski should merit some of my money as well, and I agree with you. His performance was spectacular. 
But Man. can I tell you? Wow. But can I tell you that for Volkanovsky, there was a big thing that was really making me sad. What? Watching the Korean zombie look like he doesn't want to MMA anymore. Bro, this is what I was saying. Like, okay, I respect Korean zombie, and this is where I'm where I'm going with this comment. I don't want to offend no one, but uh, it's crazy how this guy put a beating on his on on him that'll make him look like he just wanted to retire. Yeah, it was crazy. He, Kev, just to give you an idea, the Korean zombie, who we all love, so this is all just observations yeah. for a fighter that we love, when he was getting hit and outclassed very early in this fight, mm -hmm. there was a moment yeah. where they brought the stool to him to sit on. And he okay? couldn't even sit down on the on the stool. Well, you interpret, and I know some other people interpreted it that, as that, and I think that's a fair assessment. My mm -hmm. interpretation was, he looked like at the stool and said, I don't even deserve that. Like he looked like he was sitting on the ground being like, yeah, I'll yeah, sit down I, here. I don't I even feel deserve like to, to, to sit up there. I just, I, I can't beat this guy. I'm getting outclassed. And it was uh, very sad to see to the point, yeah. Kevin, where Herb Dean basically Just stopped stop. the fight yeah. while Korean zombie was still standing. Like he took a, a four combo. It hit. was a Tony Ferguson Gaethje type of stuff. Yeah. And it was so welcomed. The community yeah. was like, thank you, Herb, for stepping in. Man, respect. Also, also, uh, sorry, sorry. No, yeah, no, so I, but also I hear also a lot of people talking like shit about Volkanovski. Volk is a great man too. He weighed there. He like, this is, this is something that I like about fights too, that like a lot of the times they they expect us to be animals or be just rude or dumb people and they don't realize that we're we like we are just regular humans too you know and like that for me like waiting for him on the on the on the door just like to to hug him to give him the respect that he deserves for me that speaks a lot for volkanovsky you know i that's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah and Again, Volk is one of my favorite people to watch. I think it was, on the other hand, very exciting to see him really continue to step into that emergence of being a beast. I'm like, unmuted. We've seen great my five-minute uh, penalty box for the pun is over, ref. So yeah, thank you. Time has expired. You're welcome. I can I give you all the stats on what this card went, and I think Please. I'm going to start. I'm going to start using this as a stat for fight cards, and I'm prepared for Fernando to be very angry with me about it. No, don't worry. There were 12 fights. I'll be fine. Only mm -hmm. three of them ended in a submission or KO. I'm going to call this night of fights 3-12, and 12, and I'm going to start giving them a batting average. Oh, what a smart man. How do you feel about that? Because for me, as I look through this, there's three sections of this card, and there are only three finishes. I mean, that's MMA. Mm, uh, Kev? That sounds like just passive compliance to me, Raph. That's not how I'll, we innovate. We, we need you? to start keeping a fantasy league of being like, <laughs> what's the weakest per capita B? What is your advanced metrics over the years on cards per finish, Raph? So, Kev, I'll tell you, um, during the Fight Companion, you know how I operate when I'm You in the COVID air. corner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, listen, I'm over COVID. Thank you for being concerned. I appreciate you. But when I was on air and I was watching it, um, I was openly yawning during the show. And... I'm not the type of person that usually yawns too much at like seven. But when I was yawning, normally there are ways that you can cover it and you can kind of like get around it when you're on a live broadcast. On this one, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. See that I'm yawning. That was a boring yeah. fight. If and, you ever see Raph cases, yell like he's Will Ferrell from Anchorman, he's yawning. <laughs> he's like, cha -cha! that's him yawning. If all of a sudden he looks surprised and angry at the same time, that's a yawn. That's definitely <laughs> a yawn. Fun. My main <laughs> trick is just not to make it overpronounced as a yawn. Because you know when you're yawning, 
and people really want you to know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, uh, okay, you don't need to play it up. If you're yawning, just, oh, yeah. And then you just let it happen. I'm talking, yeah. like, on camera was doing the former rather than the latter. Like, oh, no, there goes Mackenzie Dern. Yep. <laughs> Good for her. I'm happy. We love jujitsu. Yay, she won. Now, you said there were some bad decisions. I'm going to get to that one in a second. But there was a decision that happened for Aljamain Sterling. And I have bad news for you, Kevin. You know who didn't agree with that decision? Oh. My uh, Peter Yawn. Oh. Peter Yawn. Because <laughs> I had a four-fighter parlay that got oh, fucked no. by this fight hard, rap. Hard. No. I gambled on it. I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a just out there in Simpleton land. I still had a four yeah. fight parlay and I had this as a lock. If you had Alderman <laughs> Sterling, you won a lot of money. Yes. Yeah, a lot of money. I was going to put money on him, but your background noise is the most terrifying thing I've ever heard. I'm sorry. If you, no, 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 no. This is perfect. You're great. You are a fighter. This is what you do. But I'm just letting you know, yeah. passively, it sounds like a CIA black ops torture site. Just a yeah, little you heard bit. That. I thought I heard the Yakuza was making a quick drop in on the show. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was kind of weird. So, like, if you guys know Romy Adansa, OG from uh, Timoyama and, like, OG Muay Thai fighter. He's a monster, and I feel the one. The, like, it sounds classes, violent. Yeah. Yeah, his my his 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 Muay Thai classes are the best that I see in a long time. That's awesome, dope. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm here. that only makes me more scared of you. So, Raph, I dial have. it up. I got some shit so, talking to do. <laughs> Kev, just to fill you in on this one, uh, Aljamain Sterling, mm-hmm. he won by EBI overtime. Now, what do I mean by that? I, what do you mean? I was honestly like, what do you mean yeah, by that? So, yeah. essentially, he got a body triangle on Peter Yan for eight minutes that went through the second and third rounds. And when that happened, that's less time for Peter Yan to do Peter Yan things. But bad news, even on the feet, Peter Yan was looking a little less. Something wasn't there. But when Peter Yan realized the score... And they interviewed him after. And by the way, I don't know if people think about this, but I don't know if, if many people here have watched the movie Muppets Most Wanted. But Peter Yawn, to me, sounds like Evil Kermit. And I hope that more people go and listen to him and Evil Kermit and see if they don't come up with the same sort of perspective. But when I hear Evil Kermit starting to make the case of, what? I win rounds of one. Two, four and five, I win. And I go, wait, you think you won round two? And I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, okay, dude, I get it. You just fought. Maybe your thoughts aren't super clear. But he was saying with some conviction, and maybe he was a little confused. But to me, I just go, bro, no, go back and watch the fight. I promise you. And if you think that you won round two, yikes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think he messed up in that comment, but I think it was just the moment he didn't realize what rounds it was. But he knew he look. At least he knew he he won three rounds. You know, like that's what I mean. Like, okay. At least no, I knew. mean I think he said he won four. But hey, I hear you. Do you think that he lost? No, I really think he won. I think he closed uh. fifth round better. It was all in that fifth round too. That's the crazy part. This uh, the last two fights that we talked. It was all in the last round, and I think Peter Young close a little bit better. Also, I uh, I'm glad I wasn't the first one saying it, but uh, you know what, uh, Terrence McGee McGinney say about like that he felt he, I, I in the fight in the moment of the fight. You know, like um, I need to watch the fight again. Mm. But in the moment, I saw I saw Sterling almost like wanted to get illegal knee or something too again on the last yeah, round. Yeah, you bring up yeah. a very good point. He would almost he was going down on all fours at points when yes. most fighters would just shoot back up. Like nobody goes to turtle as much as he was going for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And I on the live broadcast I was doing was going, "Don't you do it? Don't you do yeah, it, yeah, Jan?" Me too. Me too. I was, I was so, I was literally saying that all the time. Like, don't, 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 don't. This will be so bad. But, but okay, uh, you also fight professionally. How confusing yeah. 
is it for that rule? Because <laughs> Isn't that I confusing? don't ever think about ever kneeing or hitting somebody, but yeah. I also know in the heat of the moment, you're just trying to do what you can yeah. to win. Yeah, I mean, in the heat of the moment, everything can happen. That's why I, why, that's why I cannot say like, oh, I will never do it. Yeah. But uh, for example, the first knee, I think it was the problem of him listening to his corner and not like maybe not watching what he was doing because he just like that knee was completely illegal. Mm. But you can see now in this in this second fight, like I tell you, I saw Sterling like kind of like looking for it and he was really composed. Like I like that, you know, he was really composed. And um, but then we go into the, for example, the the illegal kick that that it almost happened on Burns' fight. So, like, that was only the heat of the moment. I'm pretty sure Burns were, wasn't thinking, like, oh, this is illegal. He's fucking yeah. throw a kick, you know? <laughs> He's <Yeah>. stringing. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So, yeah. Also, you know, there's, like I, like I tell you, every fighter is a world. We are different persons, different people, right? So, like, there's fighters who will tell you, like, no, 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 it's all it's all in, like, I'm like that. I will throw whatever. I will fight, you know. And others, so they there are more composed, more uh, clean with their technique. So, yeah, you can, it can happen. Depend the fighter. I will tell you, <clears throat> I did enjoy uh, kind of the result rather than the actual fight of the Mackenzie Dern and Tisha Torres fight. There were a couple fun moments in that. You didn't Fine. enjoy the fight? I think it was a good fight, though. Um, no, I didn't love it. Um, it was kind of weird, and yeah. I just I could accept what it was. Got, yeah, who you got? Who you got in winning? Um, I think on the broadcast I said I thought that Tisha Torres won, in my opinion, but okay. I also didn't care. That was a tough one because I just go like, oh, did Mackenzie win? OK, cool. I do um, like and- this about your broadcasts. And this is a, a little plug out. You do make a decision. You like to yeah, give your it. opinion even before the judges do. You're like, here's how I saw it. And then you ask. And it, it's an interesting, but you're going to notice this. Broadcasters that give their opinion before the decision become versus after. Very different. So, yeah. Nice shot. Yeah. No, it's true. It's and not, it's- how about Casey during that fight? Did you uh, have Mackenzie Dern in that fight? No, you didn't. And if you go back, you'll hear I me asked, shaming I you. you. I, I ask you, you got Mackenzie Dern in that fight? Absolutely, but I was kind okay. of uh, <laughs> pissed. I will yeah. say I was pissed. There there wasn't, I mean, as Raph alluded to, like holding him down for nine minutes, I was looking for a little bit more control. And it seems like I, I was just looking for a little more jujitsu. I was surprised for yeah. Mackenzie on that front. But that's been a trend. I get it, right? You want to try yourself on other things, but still. And there was, I think, was it the second round or so that Mackenzie was trying to shoot up uh, some jujitsu? Um, at one point, I think she was even, it might have been the end of the first, where she was trying like a footlock. And I just said, you know what? Do it. Do whatever works. I do Try like it. that she throws us a few bones every fight. She's like, yeah. I don't know how high percentage, you know, or <laughs> no gi. We're just, yeah. it's sweaty. There's lights, but you know, fuck it. I'll try. But yeah, mm-hmm. I thought in the second round, she was trying to make some jujitsu happen. And yeah, I appreciated that much. So there was that. Uh, Mark Madsen versus Vince Pichel. I like Vince a lot. I didn't think he won, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. but, um, but Madsen was making the case for old people everywhere as he's uh-huh. like, oh, yeah, I'm just feeling it. I don't care how old I am. Uh-huh. It's great. I'm enjoying fighting right now, which only begs for us to really, really look further into uh, a master's division for the UFC because uh, that would be great. What do you mean master's division? We're talking about old people division. Like. Let's put it this way. Oh, yeah. Your I mean, ears you can't, can't hear it yet, Fernando. <laughs> you're you're not there yet, Rev. I also had a moment where I was like, where's Matt Joubert? I want to make sure he and Mark Madsen aren't the same person. <laughs> just that was a small they do moment. They look a little similar. Yeah. I just, I just like, oh, let me verify that they're not in the same location. I like this idea. We've been talking about this for a while, Fernando. A, you know, a 40-plus division. Okay. I think he's, I think it will be good though. 
You can we put something. Very funny. Also. Some, uh, Bellator used uh, to help uh, us uh, out here. Carps, <laughs> that's 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 a good cut. I mean, it's a good call. You know, you never know. But I think for that time, like people don't like. That's why they retire. You know, they don't want to keep yeah. keep getting hit. Yeah, no, man, I get it. But then you get the people who you go, hi, Donald Cerrone. I don't yeah. feel like matching you up with anybody young. That doesn't <laughs> yeah. seem good. Um, five, six years ago, eh, maybe I still would have entertained it. Now I just want you to kind of think about retirement. But well, tell you Olenek, won't let us do that. Let's just like venture down the card. We'll let Olenek yeah. know. Hey, stop choking people unconscious, sir. You're too old to do that on national <laughs> television. I mean, it is yeah. Great. So Olenek had a really cool submission. At one point, though, yeah. he concerned me because he did just grab the back of his opponent's neck and tried to do that mount me and I'll Ezekiel you kind of choke. And I go, please don't do that. That could <laughs> end very badly. And yeah. through a series of events after that, not saying that won it for him, but through some transitions that happened where he had his own back compromise for a split second, he ended up reversing the position and getting to a scarf hold and finishing from there. And there was a very adorable ESPN video where Olenek showed uh, Vandera backstage how yeah, to do the submission. Move. And I yeah, thought yeah. that was that was cool. I, I always like seeing so that dope. sort of stuff. Yeah, I like that too. Can you tell me what just didn't happen because we like k obviously the weight cut didn't happen well for this time and it's it the first time fight, i honest with you ah, uh it, i was busy and i tried to wash it but i i was just doing moving some stuff with some friends moving one friend totally from house, cool. so. it was right at the top of the card so it is yeah, hard was, to catch those like, no, yeah but I, I if i i hear a lot of people you stuck it on the fight uh I don't know. Uh, I have a lot of feelings with those type of things. Yeah. Also, I don't feel right when the UFC put you on like on blast. You know, I mean, never happened with me, so I cannot say nothing. But I hear stories of like they telling you, like telling fighters, say hey, you need to knock this next guy out, you need to finish this fight. So like, I feel that put a lot of pressure on fighters. And I hear from a few people that that might was a, might be the case with. Uh, uh, K, that the, they uh, tell her that I don't know if that make a big uh, that make a big impact on this fight or not. Uh, I really don't know her and didn't don't talk to her to know that. But uh, yeah. I hope it wasn't that. You know. <laughs> yeah, it was it was hard because I I'm familiar with her and and we're friendly and I was watching it, that fight and I just go man it just didn't happen that night. And I saw her put up a post where she's like, eh, fuck this. I'll be back. It's fine. It's just, God I mean, damn it. Exactly. It's just, that's another thing. Okay. Like, yeah, it is sad and everything, but I feel it is better for her to take it on a, and I'm pretty sure she's doing, uh, um, uh, but she's taking it on a good page, you know, on a good, it's, it's a good page. She said, you're 22 and you're already been uh, like a whole contract with the UFC. So like, you never know, maybe when she turns 25, um, I also think that she might got like to the UFC real fast. And, uh, it's because she was, she had dominant, the dominant performance in Invicta and in, 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 and then the company, I think she just fought on Invicta, but, uh, she had really dominant performances there. So like, I feel that that was a mistake. But at this point, it's only experience. So, like she says, she's just 22. She might be. She might be back. She might go to another bigger company or like someone to pay her more. You never know. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Fair. That's a good thing she's about this. 22. Now. Exactly 22. Yeah. Some Damn. of the fighters, you all, uh, it tricks you because you know you think of this and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, the fighters, uh, 20, 24, 22. It's like, oh shit. Damn. Okay. Well, it's yeah. also. You're growing up right in front of people, and I don't know if you really go back and revisualize what you were doing at 22. Um, I'm pretty sure if the camera's on me, they probably would have seen me, like in my preparation, just sitting in my room, being like, um, "I guess I got to fight." Mm -hmm. Shit, dude. All right, I'll go out there when I'm ready. I'll see you guys a little later. Like, 
I'm not sure I would have been the right person at 22. So I, I think there is a lot of pressure, but she's obviously super talented. Um, we'll have to see what comes up next. We mentioned Mickey Gall getting kind of knocked out. That was what it was. Okay, yeah, but, that was a good fight. Yeah, and, and Mike was great. That was a, a big moment for him. Uh, so I was very happy about that. Kevin, you mentioned Rocky Pennington getting the decision win over Aspen Ladd. That fight and rocked, she, by the way, despite she was great, yeah. my condescension about decisions. That fight was awesome. They were yes. beating the shit out of each other for <laughs> several minutes of several yeah. rounds. It was a, uh, I'm not necessarily, like, just especially that third round, a lot of punches. You'll see it, but it was a good yeah. fight. And I love that. To... Go ahead. No, no, I say OG paint and I mean, she pull it out. And She's that was the badass. thing that Joe Rogan essentially went up to tell her, which was, you're no, that so was a... fucking tough. <laughs> right yeah, he's like, you're a, that was a scrappy fight, which if you think about it is all your fights. And I go, mm -hmm. yeah, it really is. But it's mm -hmm. part of the reason why I think we are so endeared to her is that her body of work is always there was like a very good stuff. Seven seconds. She was sizing him up. Like, I, I just might punch him. She really, it's, that's fighters. Like she just has that fighter look to her where she's like knocking you out next. You get any closer with that microphone. Really. Well, that like, I don't, also... how, how old is Rick and Pennington? Let's find out. She is officially 33 years young. Oh, then that was fast. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, and uh, this is what I've been seeing with Raquel Pennington, mm. but, like, I confuse her a lot with a feminine version of Dustin Poitier. Okay. And you never know. She might get yeah. another title shot. You might, You never know. And sure. it's just she, she put those hands, you know, work every time. That's true. She doesn't wear nearly as many Hawaiian shirts. I was like, he might but... be more feminine, but I like the comparison. <laughs> yeah, they do have a lot of similarities fight wise. That By the way, you're right on the We're just the gonna fight brawl call, it out. Yeah. I just I and do want to who doesn't wear who doesn't wear the Hawaiian shirts? Because they both have pictures with Hawaiian shirts, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. but, but I just meant seen... like he's the last one to wear eyeliner of the two. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Dustin Poirier's closet though? I want to say like I've seen him talk about some of his shirts or something like that, and I go, Love bro, you're the most leisure wear I think I've seen of all of the fighters. And yet I think it's the right uniform for him. Like if he came in board shorts and a t-shirt, I'd be like, Can you go put on a Hawaiian shirt? Like a respectable yeah. human being here, yeah. sir. <laughs> Like, I'd be like, I'm not getting the real Dustin Poirier experience. You came here in fucking garbage. Get out of here. Come on, man. <laughs> so I, I know that's what I would probably tell him as he's doing a thousand charitable things or beating people up. So that's what happened there. I don't know if there's too much more that happened that is worthy of being talked about. Anthony Hernandez uh, didn't make a friend out of Josh Friend. And that was uh, that was an okay fight, I guess. And then Ian Gary picked up the win over Darian Weeks. Yeah, I think that brings us to being current. So, Kevin, do we have some results that we need to talk about right now? We have some sizes we need to talk about right now. Oh <laughs> no! What kind of sizes, sizes, Kevin? What are you talking about? What look, does that mean? look, I'm going to go down the lineup. My okay. colleague in picking is welcome to tell me where I'm sure he disagrees with his own picks from a week ago. But in the Battle of Arse versus Santos, I had the arse. It reminded me of the word ass in British. Made me giggle. Win that one. He had Pennington versus Ladd. And again, um, if you had followed his picks in Betsy, you could have won some money here. That's a bigger. That was a heavy underdog. I had Shimev, he had Burns. Though we've mentioned yeah. that fight got a lot closer. We both had Vince so. from Hell Pichel because we're geniuses. We both had the Hanson because, you know. I had mm -hmm. Dern for jujitsu reasons. You had Torres oh for yeah, Because game reasons. For defiant jujitsu reasons. We both had Petra Yan because I agreed with you and was wrong again, it turns out. <laughs> You had Olenek, uh, really jealous of that pick mm -hmm. for his. I know his like 60th win. <laughs> it's absurd. Mm -hmm. 
We the both, man of a million. <laughs> we both had Malat. Mm-hmm. I had Hernandez. Because Mickey Gog put a jinx on himself. Yeah. We both had Gary. And then I had Volkanovsky. And if those Yeah, are... and I got my dream, my crazy fucking dream. Yeah, I know. You and had to respond. You me. got punished aggressively in the pick department from a total of seven <laughs> to four. Don't feel bad. It's not you. It's me. I'm it's amazing okay. at this. It's okay. At least I know I will I will bet a slap. At least next time. Because if you talk all these like trash and you took all these street and I'm doing like those finger quotes, I think that's how you call them. You're talking all these about street. Let's bet some slaps. So that would assume that you would be brought back for an additional installment of Over Under Kevin. And although I like <laughs> or a particularly Kevin, violent role, <laughs> either <right>. way. <laughs> And although I definitely love putting Kevin under duress, I don't know that I will invite you back for over under <laughs> Kevin. We'll probably invite you back for other reasons, obviously, when you got uh, fights or I like wanna... Kevin. you do, but we're we're putting you on a probation period here on the show <laughs> because we're not sure how you're going to act. Because it was such an ass me. beating. Oh, oh he no. put Kevin, that in the third us. wall. Ah, oh, this was a well, devastation. Uh, I beat you uncontrollably at picking fights. Welcome back. Yeah, you did. That was really oh, good. Oh, rap, picks. it feels good. So, good picks, so Kevin. I wish I had my as instructor <laughs> screaming in the background. As huh, we alluded to, <laughs> alluded to earlier, there is a t-shirt exchange, so I believe that uh, Broke Boys will yes. be uh, sent on over this mm -hmm. way, which is very exciting. Which Broke I... Voice is going to be sending some shirts to their Broke Voice. Yes. Thank you. They are awesome <laughs> shirts, by the way. And I put Thank a link you, to your social media and the websites in the last episode description. And we'll put one in this one. Go buy some shirts. Verbal Tap Crowd. Thank you. You need to and look better. It was, it, the pandemic's yeah. ending. You have to go out in public. <laughs> nah. Go buy a new shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dude. go express yourself. You need to treat yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Let me sell it a little bit. Look, guys, I'm Fernando Padilla, better known as El Valiente, and I'm from Chihuahua, Mexico. I'm a poor kid that has been trying to make it here in America. If you guys want to buy some beautiful merch from Broke Boys, El Valiente, Feel free to go to my page on Instagram. There's a link there. You can go to the page brokevoiceoc.com and find you some beautiful merch. Kevin, do you <laughs> like the horse riding one? Or do you like the... Is this a chainsaw? Like, what is this? I this like is... hearing El Valiente. Give us a nice deep yeah. narrative. <laughs> I'm going to have to contemplate now. I'm sorry. I got caught in the romance <laughs> of the description. Thank I mean, you, look, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, can we describe? Is this a championship belt in one hand and then so, like a machete so, in the other? So, okay. So, El Valiente, it's it's a guy from the cards, the game La Loteria in Mexico, right? Mm. But that exact design, design that you guys have on the shirt is my tattoo on my right arm. Mm. And uh, what I did is, yes, my tattoo don't have uh, it has the belt, but it doesn't have it fill it up. So. When I get the belt of the UFC, uh, I'm going to fill it up. That's, uh, that's my goal. That's why I have the tattoo. But we fill it up with the OOC, uh, the BBOC logo mm -hmm. in there. So it looks good. <laughs> that, my so, yeah, friend. That's a belt. An, yeah, that's a belt and a knife. That is an excellent way of uh, visualizing your success as being like, I'm only going to get part of the tattoo so that when my reality happens, I can finish out the rest of it and put some rubies on that bitch for the amount of title yes, defenses sir. I have too. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have it since my 18th birthday. I, I get it, and uh, that's what drives me every day too. You know, my family and that tattoo fill it up. That's mm. what's up. Well, we appreciate you coming back on the show. Obviously, Thank Fernando. You, you're a huge part of uh, our family, you know, what we do here on this show. You've always been so great to me personally. I'm so glad that you were able to come on this show, get to know Kevin a little bit better. 
Um, can yes. we help you do any other shout outs or sponsors for us, sir? Because I know you have so many people who uh, help and, and make you the type of fighter that you are. Thank you. I mean, shout out to you guys, obviously, because you guys had me here and uh, put the effort of calling me again. You know, I, I've been a really uh, bad uh, person or uh, at least I've been bad with you, Ralph, and I've been not able to do what you've been asking me for. Pro, and I feel really bad Pro for wrestling, jujitsu, mostly, specifically. Yeah. Yeah. But... um. But I'm glad to be here uh, for the second time, and I will be so happy to have you a third one. And like I say, I'm down to bet again with Kevin. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really glad I met, I, I met him, and uh, I'm happy to be in the show, guys. Thank you so much. Shout out to my family, to Team Oyama, to everyone who supports me, and um, just expect big things from Fernando. That I will, I will do big things. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That'll do it for us here tonight at Verbal Tap. I'm Kevin, and hopefully your wrestling instructor can teach you how to not lose at picking fights. <laughs> good night <laughs> and <a> good fight. <laughs>